Hi everyone, and welcome back to the ninth video of the Old Testament survey course. In the last section, we completed all of the introductory material on the Old Testament as a whole. And in this section, we're going to look briefly at some introductory material for the first group of Old Testament books called the Pentateuch. First, a word about that name. In the last section, you learned that these books go by various names, sometimes called Torah, sometimes the Book of Moses, the Law, and the Pentateuch. The term Pentateuch is the Greek name for these books, and it's a combination of two Greek words. The word penta means five, as in pentagon or pentagram, and the word tukos means scroll. So the word Pentateuch means five scrolls or five books, a logical name for these five books. And also the word Torah. This is the Hebrew name for these books. The word Torah means official instruction, and it's often translated law. But God's law is far more than just rules. It is a gracious word. It's instructions how to live and to know God himself. We sometimes think of the word law as restrictive and strict, but the connotation of the word Torah is gracious guidance. And now, just a reminder of the history that's covered by these five books. These five books cover the first three historical epics, the prehistory, patriarchs, and the Exodus conquest. The first two of these epics are covered in the book of Genesis, and the other four books all are around the time of the Exodus. That means in terms of the history, Genesis is a very important book because one book covers two of the historical epics, a very large time period. And as such, it sets the historical tone for the rest of the Bible. And another reminder, the five books of the Torah are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But let's talk a little bit about the authorship of the Pentateuch. Technically, the books are anonymous. They don't themselves clearly state who wrote the the entire books in their entirety. Traditionally, authorship of these books is ascribed to Moses. There are a few passages that seem to be written by someone else, such as the narrative of Moses' death and his burial. And in the past century, many people have argued that Moses didn't write the Torah. But most of these arguments uh, have been proven to be faulty and come from unwarranted skeptical presuppositions. And there are many very good reasons to suggest that Moses was the primary author of the Pentateuch. And the strongest reason is that the Bible itself points to Moses as the author. Like I said, the the text doesn't say Moses wrote the whole books, but in the text of the Torah itself, there are many references to Moses writing at least large parts of it. And biblical tradition has always taught that Moses is the author, including, including Jesus himself. He referenced these books by Moses' name. And the bottom line is that the best explanation is that the bulk of these books came from Moses himself. Possibly he used earlier sources and traditions, and there's a possibility that there's some later editions and editing of these books, but the books originated from Moses. If you want to pursue the authorship question further, your textbook has a detailed discussion. Next, the date of the writing of these five books was most likely near the end of the Exodus, around the time of the events narrated at the end of the book of Deuteronomy. Even though, of course, many of the events described in these books, like in Genesis, happened hundreds or even thousand years earlier. The purpose of writing the Torah, it was written down by God's command in order to give the newly formed people a sense of their history, 
their identity and their destiny and their special calling as God's people. It, it was to give meaning to what God was doing in their history for his people and what he was planning to do through them for all of the world. The Torah was clearly stated to be a permanent record of God's covenant with his nation and an abiding witness of what is required of God's people for all posterity beyond just the Exodus generation. And it was also to be a permanent witness to all the world of God's great salvation and promise of blessing for the entire earth. This then is an overview of the five books of Moses. In the next section, we're going to start to look in much more detail at the first of these books, Genesis. Thanks for watching.